What's up everyone? Lots of exciting stuff today. I got some updates on a couple fish that you guys have been asking about. Cool things happening today, so come check it out. All right, so first up on the chopping block, what do we have? We're coming around to the quarantine system. So you guys know we have this tank underutilized. Well, me and my dad decided to go ahead and stick Mr. Lone Star in with one of the Goliath tiger fish. But here we're gonna do a measurement on him. So my dad's gonna hold the camera here. He is in the bucket and his tail's wrapping around about an inch, inch and a half. This bucket is 11 and a half inches wide. So it's safe to say he's 12, 13 inches long. He is definitely a uh, big little fish. He's done lots of growing. When he uh, came in, he was about the size of my pinky. We were real yes. scared. He was fragile, super scary fish, but we've got him eating good. And now he's growing. So this is his first tank upgrade. And he'll be able to live in this 125 for quite a, a while before we upgrade him again. There you go, buddy. Enjoy your new home. Check him out. Look how awesome he is. You can see his front and back legs are looking more proportional to his body. All of his scales look almost perfect. There's nothing disproportionate on him. No uh, uh, deformities or nothing like that. He is a beautiful looking Australian lungfish. So this came from Lone Star Rare and Exotic Fit Fish Co. So shout, shout out to them. If you guys want any awesome fish, you can always check them out. So now you guys can get some sort of a size comparison of the larger Goliath next to the Afri uh, Australian lungfish, almost that African. <laughs> so he's de definitely putting on, on some size too. And this guy smashes a worm a day. And hopefully with the addition of this guy, we feed him different kinds of meats. My dad feeds him pellets. So hopefully with him eating those, it'll entice this guy into eating. The most we've ever gotten him to do was uh, go and strike at some food. He took it in his mouth and spit it out. So it's just a matter of time. While we're over here, down here in this bottom 40 breeder, used to be quarantine, we had the dolphin down here. So we went ahead and moved this guy. Where did we move him to, you ask? Well, let us see. Nope, definitely not in with Lavaca. So over here in this 90 gallon, on our system, there goes the dolphin front and center. Down below, he was uh, forgotten about, wasn't really on display or showcase. So in this tank here, he's uh, seemed to find his little spot underneath this plant, right between the cone. He thinks he's hiding, we get to see him all the time. And joined him in here is uh, a little school of angelfish. And then there's a bunch of plecos in here. Let's see if I can find them. I gotta do some cleanup on some of these old dead plants, but there goes a uh, gold nugget down there. There's a big uh, royal pleco right behind the sponge filter in there. And there's a few smaller ones. And there's also a blue botilla loach in here as well. So everyone's getting some upgrade. This guy I actually forgot about. That is a spotted Raffaella cat. So uh, everyone getting upgraded today. Let's see what else we can get our hands on. So looking over here at Thanos, update on him. You can see his hole in the head is even closing up even more. And that spot that was on his head from him sticking his head out of the water like that. We've been trying to teach him not to do that. And it is skinned back over. It is looking better. So uh, Thanos is doing great. Let's actually see if we can feed him. He loves these jumbo krill. So here we go. Bam. Another one? There you go. Ha <laughs> ha. You want some more? Give you more. Ha <laughs> ha. Awesome. Boom. So we're just feeding him these uh, free, freeze-dried jumbo krill. He seems to absolutely love them. I just don't want to feed him too many because then they'll rot in his tank. So they'll float on top of the water like that until that they rot. 
Right now he's starting to show less and less interest, so that's gonna be the last one we give Thanos here. But you, you can see his belly's getting pretty fat there. He's a well-fed boy. And he's keeping his cut color, beautiful looking flower horn. Looking down here, we got three archer fish in that are uh, fully freshwater. So we're gonna be putting them into a tank for, for themselves. We're gonna try and do that up super neat and actually have them eat the bugs off the branches so they can actually squirt the water at you. For those of you that don't know, archer fish are known. They're the guys that sit up at the top of the water if there's a bug crawling on the branch. They actually spit water out, and sometimes, even if you're walking by the tank, they'll spit water at you because they associate you with food, and they think they're going to get fed. But they're super neat creatures, and it'll be fun to do some video content on them for you guys. And of course, while I'm over here filming content for you guys, I forget doing a water change on this quarantine tank. Water's on the floor. It doesn't look so bad over here. And we round the corner and bum bum bum, the floor's all wet. I flooded it again. After we had just flooded it last night and the night before, last night it was this, uh, here you can see there's water right there and water coming out right there. This overflow had gotten plugged on the stingray tank and it had stopped so it was overflowing the, the, the tank and the night before that, from adding in the stingrays in here, they, they poop out big plugs. So they got caught in the filter here on the strainer and it didn't get sucked through. And you know, sometimes it gets blocked right there at that little contraption there. And this was overflowing, got my floor all wet. So you know what, it's always, you know, a learning curve. E even for guys who've been doing it for such a long time, we still, you know, have to, relive all of these rookie mistakes sometimes like overflowing an aquarium because it is inevitable if you are a fish keeper now some of you guys give us problems about miss lavaca here well if you don't like her decorations that's fine she's a little princess so she was over here in this 265 and you guys didn't mind her with the uh with no decorations at all we put her over here with, with the castles and all of a sudden people have pr problems with, with her. Come on guys. Well, we're not gonna dwell on that bit of information. We're just gonna give you some cool updates on these wonderful fish. So now we got those. We're not gonna talk about that tank, but we're gonna talk about Mr. Gooch over here. Ah, uh, more water keeps coming out. Wonderful. Mr. Gooch over here, he's, he's still not a very aggressive eat, eater, but Mr. Hubert loves the food. And this Gooch, oh my goodness, he sees that come up to the top of the water, he's out wanting food. He has grown so much. Oh my God, I love this fish, he's awesome. Don't have no problems with, with them. And when you have a fish like this that you have no problems with, you don't want to move them. Just like these guys over here, you can see the Tigrinus. He's got both of his streamers as well as the Paraiba. I wanna give them guys an upgrade, but this Paraiba is doing so well and his streamers are fully intact, that I don't wanna move them. When you have a fish doing good, you leave them be. <laughs> there goes that Adonis Pleco. You know, the world record breaking Adonis Pleco that beat out Mr. Predatory Fins over there. Yeah, that's the, the guy measured in it. Just over 36 inches long. Pretty crazy. Checking back on this guy. He is seeming to love his new tank. He's just been going around checking things out. Now he's up and in your face. So definitely liking his new tank. He's got lots of plants to sift through. There's a bunch of snails in this tank that he's probably going to eat and that's okay natural food supply for him. My only concern now is with having to feed him. In the other tank, I was able to just throw mice and shrimp in for him. But now in this tank, you've got the angel fish, which will also pick off some of the mice and shrimp. So I'm gonna have to uh, maybe target feed him or see if I can get him on the same type of food as these guys, but that's all right. I will work with them and make sure it happens.
As you guys remember, we had the dolphin over in this tank. We never seen him. He was always hidden behind the, this log and he never ate in here. So we removed him, got him eating good. Now he's back in this 90 gallon to see if we can uh, have success in this tank. You can see he's de definitely fat and put it on some weight. So my hopes are high. Oh, look at him, he's loving it. You see he scraped himself up on that decoration when I was catching him out of the other tank. That'll heal up, no problem. I'm gonna leave you guys with one last bit down here. You know, my dad moved them koi. Now this tank is being opened up for a new inhabitant. It's going to be a species only tank. So let us figure out what that's going to be. It'll be in the next few days. So this will be turned into an awesome tank. He'll quarantine in here and then we'll end up putting him on our system. So yes, that gave it away. He will be staying with us and he will be another ambassador of the OFR. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We will catch you in the next one. Stay fishy, my friends.